Hi, welcome to Go on the Run. And in this video, we're doing part three of Go Profiling. And we're looking at profiling a simple word count application. So if you're jumping in at this point, you really want to check out the first video, part one. If you've watched part one, then check out part two. Only makes sense. So what are we doing? To recap, we're writing a simple Go application to do word counting of some input text. In the last video, we add profile into our simple iterative solution to see where exactly the bottleneck was. And what it looks like we could process 15 text files for our data set that we have anyway, and we can process that in about three point something seconds, just, for, just over three seconds. And when we profile the data, what we saw, let's go back and take a look. So we're looking at example two, in which we add profile into our code. Now, the files that we generated were these files. And as you can see, it looked like the hot path, right? This red line was occurring mostly in the processing of file. And we decided to ignore printing because we said that's not important. And besides which, we were really just interested in the time it takes to process our input. We don't really care what line it takes to print it out. And it looked like what we were doing is just spending most of our time like scanning data from the file and trying to process it essentially. Just reading data from the file and running through our scanner, which we use the buffer scanner. Now, to get a better understanding of what's going on, that was when we pr processed one file. This is when we process all 15 files. As you can see, now printing out doesn't really show up as dominating that much. We spend very little time printing out our result and that three seconds we spend processing 15 files, well, most of it was spent in the file processing function and, again, reading files from the operating system and processing the data. And so we decided that what we should probably do to make this processing go faster is probably read files in parallel. And remember that we can write concurrent code and go very easily, but if you don't have multiple cores, you wouldn't get parallelism. And so for our example, it doesn't matter if we made um, reading files concurrent or processing file concurrent. If we don't have multiple cores, we're not going to see any benefit. Also, I warned that if you have a hard drive that has a single platter or, you know, basically the head, you have a single head, well, you can only read so many different places off of that platter. And that's going to be one place. And it really wouldn't matter if you try to read two files in parallel you're probably not going to see any improvement. So let's take a look at example three. So we'll go to this directory, select this, copy the code. So let's select all of it, copy, and we'll paste it. Let's leave that open, that's fine. We'll paste it over our previous code and so we can see what changed. And so except for the import, if you notice, what we really change. So let's focus on our for loop. We're iterating over the list of file, input file name, and we're calling go process. This time when we call go process, we're giving it a wait group, the file name, and then some place to write the result. And then we have this result lock. So if you look at this, this is a mutex, and it's going to be responsible for locking something. And we also have this result where we're going to expect I'll be managing our map. So we can imagine that this lock is going to be used so that we don't have contention in writing to this map. If you try to have multiple Go routine write to the same map, you're going to see incorrect result. So let's take a look at our process function, process file function. Well, process file simply kicks off a Go routine that does what? It opens the file, and if it can open the file, then it creates a scanner and it sits in a loop, read the data from this file, and then tries to update the map. And this is where it needs to use that lock because it's updating the same map that other Go routines that are processing files concurrently might also want to update. It needs to introduce a lock. Now we can argue about whether or not we should put the lock around just this piece of this line of code where we try to update one word or whether we should allow this go routine to lock 
the map, acquire the map, until it's finished processing the entire file. That seems to defeat the purpose of us reading files in parallel. Because if we have multiple cores indeed, and we're going to be able to read files in parallel, then if only one file at a time can update the map, then we might as well just read the file one after the other anyway. So put in the lock here just before we update the map and then releasing it as quickly as possible is the best way we should use it if we want to read files and process them in parallel. And once we finish processing or kicking off Go routine to process our files, then we just print out the result. And again, nothing really new going on with print results. It's just printing out the map. But at that point, we don't have to worry about contention because we would have waited for all our Go routine that are processing files to finish before we proceed with trying to print out results. So hopefully that's a pretty straightforward solution. It basically says, if I have 15 files, create 15 Go routines and let them fight it out and figure out which one gets to run. And whichever one gets to run based on how many cores I have and so on, well, it's going to pick up a file, try to process it, and it's just going to lock the acquire the lock for as long as it needs to update a word, and then it releases it. So let's build this and profile it, see what happens. So we have already updated our code, so we can do go build. If you remember, we have these options for CPU profiling and memory profiling. We already said that we're not interested in memory profiling, so let's just do CPU profile. And we'll put it in CPU.prof file. And if we, oh, we need our data. So our data is test data star. And let's run that. And already I have the feeling that oh, this is worse. Well, I'm only pretending. I know the result because remember, I did this already for my Golang for tourist course that I have on Udemy that has recently been released. So anyway, um, seven seconds. So this is worse than what we were doing before. But remember, before we make changes to code, we should always profile it to see if we are in track and see exactly where things are slowing down because we could be wrong about what is it that is slow. So let's run the profile tool now to take a look and see what is happening. So prof minus PNG to write out that PNG file. And there we go. Uh, so what did I mess up? Go to pprof or oh, minus PNG. There we go. And so it write this new file, profile three. And I can take a look at this file from within Visual Studio Code. So I don't really have to open up my preview or something. So, okay. So what's happening now? So if you look, you'll see that we're spending quite a bit of time on locking and locking that mutex, which is not surprising. If you look at this code, we're sitting in this very tight loop for each file. And so trying to get a word, turn it into a lowercase, and then try to update it in this map. But then it has to acquire the lock force, update the map, then release it. And so it's just doing this repetitively. And this would still come out as a hot path, even if I was processing one file, which we can try, because I'm just sitting there locking, unlocking, locking, unlocking for each word. And much as if I have, you know, these going sort of in parallel because I have multiple cores. So this is not a surprising result for me. And so, but it, what it does tell us is that we're sort of on the right path with the reading files in parallel, okay? And as you can see, we spend very little time reading and um, files because we're doing that in parallel. Most of our time now is spent locking and unlocking. So this is a hint of what we should change in the next program. We wanna get rid of this lock and unlock. And so we have to figure out a safe way that allows us to still read and process files in parallel. Because remember, with all parallelism, we're not making any progress. We're not going to go faster. So we need to figure out how to um, read these files in parallel, but not use lock and unlock. So that's going to be in the next example. Like I said, if we go to just read in one file, like you can see we're still coming in around the time that we did before. So our concurrent solution for one file are about the same time, but they differ significantly when we come to processing multiple files. So, okay, so now that we have some information, we made a change. And it looks like it's worse, 
but come back in the next and final video and we'll see how this basic example that we've used here is actually going to be faster than our iterative solution because we're going to get rid of these two odd paths here, the ones that are using the mutex. Okay, that's it. Good luck. Definitely leave me feedback if you have any on what you would do differently or what you think. And if you haven't yet entered the contest for the Golang for Taurus code, it's open until December 26, 2018. If you're watching this video after then, well, then do still go to Udemy and check out the course. Take care. Bye.